Okay, here's a review about the critical section problem. So what happens with the critical section problem is you have this critical data and you want to control access to this critical data and not ha come up with race conditions where the data becomes inconsistent or results don't happen the way you want. So the idea is that each process has a way to enter into the critical section and only one process should be in there manipulating the data for the critical section at a time and when they're done they will exit. Alright, so here's an example using a, uh, this is a, a set of airplane seats. So just say for example everyone, all the processes are there and they can go and book an airplane seat. So let's just say that P1 is in there and P1 decides that they really like this seat right here. It doesn't have anyone next to them. So they book P1 books this seat right here. But before P1 has the op, since there's no way to control how many processes are in there getting their seats, before P1 has a chance to even, uh, you know, set the flag that that seat was booked, P2 goes in there and picks that seat. And then even before P1 or P2 have the possibility to set the flag that that seat has been booked, P3 goes in there and takes a look and says, oh, I'd like that seat. So you can see what can happen if you don't have any controls on how uh, the processes are going to uh, access this data and manipulate and change this data. All right, so if you had an entry section and an exit section, basically what you would do is only one process would be able to go in there. So for example, P1, P3, since I'm on red here, P3 would hit the entry code right here. Whatever it is, if it's a lock or it's a semaphore or whatever, P3 would hit the would hit the entry code and would and ask for permission and there were no other processes in there uh, picking their seat or anything, so P3 would be in here picking the seat. And then if another process were to were to come along, say P1 comes along and would like to go and pick a seat. P1 would come here to the entry code and would ask permission. And it would find that the uh, critical section is not available because there is another process in there. Meanwhile, P3 is in there and P3 goes and finds the seat, books the seat. And after that seat is booked, sets the flag that that seat has now been booked and then P3 will then run the, run the exit and when P3 runs the exit then wh whichever process was waiting to, to enter will uh, be able to go in and enter and that would depend on a lot of different factors whether you have those processes who are waiting to enter if they are busy waiting so then that would be the next one that uh, checks or they might be blocked and queue up so even if now P3 is done and has exited so now we're gonna have P1 in there so P1 will go in there and check and P3 is done and P3 has exited so now if any of the other processes like P4 or P5 come along say P5 now comes along P P1 is already in there P5 comes along P5 would then be blocked out so that's just the very uh, basic idea of the critical section problem and how acts, how you control access to the critical section problem. And we already discussed there's the Peterson solution which is a very simple solution where that works for two processes. There's hardware solutions, uh, test and set and swap and different ways to lock and there's another and there's a more uh, a more a, a more uh, another software solution called semaphores and semaphores do the same thing, only they use uh, procedures, wait and signal. So let's remember what they what wait does. Wait has the process has the process wait if the semaphore is is less than one or a zero, and has the process uh, decrement and own the critical section if the if the uh, semaphore is greater than zero. So it's very simple. This is a busy waiting type of semaphore. The process that's waiting is going to wait uh, busy, checking and checking and checking. 
but there is also a complex semaphore in which the process will, uh, which is in another video you can watch an animation of that. So let's go back. So here, this would be the same thing. Whichever process runs the weight, so I've got this yellow color here, so we do P5. P5 comes here and runs the weight. And so the weight says that if S is 0, which S is 1 because it's been initialized to 1, then P5 will now change S to 0. P5 will be in here and will be booking the seat. And while P5 is booking the seat, if any other Oops, P5 is in here, booking the seat. So P5 basically owns the critical section and no other processes can get in there because now the value of the semaphore is zero. So if P3 or P2 or P1, if any of them were to come here and run their weight, then what would happen is they would have to sit there and wait. So P1 could come along. P5 is already in there. P1 could come along. We could also have P3 come along here. And they're both sitting there waiting because P5 is in there finding the seat and then uh, picking the seat, setting the flag that the seat has been booked. And then when P5 is done, P5 will then, will then signal and leave. So P5 will be out of there, and the semaphore will then change the signal increments, and the semaphore will then change back to a 1. So now that the semaphore is back to a 1, if this is a busy waiting situation, which means they're taking up uh, CPU cycles in order to check, whichever one uh, runs the wait first will be the next one to go in there and own the critical section, and will block the other ones out. So just to review the weight, this is a, a semaphore with a weight and signal, and this does uh, have busy waiting.